What the heck? I'm not Josh Scott or others. I'm Zane from the band Kearney, uh, which we haven't played in a while. Uh, hey, everyone, I'm Zane Kearney. Nice to meet you. This is live. It's 9 a.m. on Friday uh, uh, in 2024 because we're going back in time, talking about time travel. That's not true. I'm Zane. I see the chat. Uh, it's so nice to have you all here. Uh, howdy, howdy, Nikki. Cider. Hey, Adrian. Hey, Ian. Hey, Chris. Hey, everyone. So uh, Josh Scott is a friend of mine. I love the whole company. JHS, let's go. Um, I love everyone there. And uh, uh, Josh reached out about a month ago. And he was like, hey, man, I've been seeing those music theory of gaming segments you've been doing on your streams on Twitch. And what if you analyzed our jams? Because we don't really exactly know what's happening harmonically. And we'd like to we'd like to know. Uh, so that's what we're doing today. We're going to be diving into four choice Josh Scott jams. Okay, we got them ready, queued up, ready to go, and uh, we're going to analyze them. And we're gonna we're gonna talk about how you can jam over them. There are some tools you're going to have at the end of this that you can use if you feel like jamming over some of these wacky things. Uh, spoiler alert: I heard one or two, uh, not the ones we're going to analyze today. I'll be live reacting to these, but I heard a couple. And I was like, oh man, we're going all we're going all over the place uh, as far as modes. And he went, talk about mode mixture? Oh, golly. Um, also, my mom's here. So it may be on JHS's channel, but you got to be, shout out Marty Heil. Capiche? We good? Uh, it's going to be fun, A Whale and a Deer. I hope you enjoy it. Now, quick little bit about myself. So I have a jazz record called Alter Ego that just came out uh, end of April, kind of May. And uh, that song you were hearing was that. Tight, pl shameless plug. Oh God, it's a good way to start. Uh, when someone invites you to their house, when you're like, oh, I'd like, I brought in my own beer and I brought in my own uh, grill. That's always fun when you make it about yourself. Oh God, it's, it's fine, it's 9 a.m. in LA. Uh, it's 1800 in Croatia, which is like 4,000 hours from now. I don't know how to do math, oh God. Uh, enough about me, enough about talking. Let's have some fun. Let's let's make music theory fun again. Uh, we're gonna dive into this first song. I believe it's called Lunar Funk. I did title these. Um, and uh, if you have questions during this, please ask. I love answering questions, and I hope uh, I hope this will be enjoyable for everyone here. Let's dive in. Okay, I see this beautiful amp, and I see this Moon Funeral pedal. I see a little drumming back in the, my man Nick. I, I see Josh's body, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna find out what key this is in. We have an E natch. Oh, also we'll be playing some guitar today. Okay, we're gonna play along with these things. Okay, great. So we have an E natural. We have our reference pitch, and we're ready to learn whatever the heck happens in this jam. Let's go. Nice. Interesting. So parallel sharp nine chords. That Jimi Hendrix chord doesn't happen very often. This is the whole form, it appears. Okay. So we're staying in this D7-ish tonality, but we have the sharp nine, which makes it, we'll talk about it, but the minor pentatonic works here, which is what Josh is using. Great. Okay, so you can even see his his uh, the shape of his hand. You can see this voicing. You can see it, right? See how his hand looks like my hand? Okay, except nicer. Okay, because it makes nice pedals. Mine just plays garbage jazz notes. Uh, okay, sharp nine chord. So there's a lot of fun stuff happening here. So uh, the chord progression is very simple, and then Josh is improvising. Let's rewind a little bit back, and we're going to to listen to the actual scale notes he's using. Now, th this jam is unlike the first jam I peeked at. I, I did not peek at any of these four jams they were listening to, but I heard a, a previous one that I think was on their uh, YouTube channel. Yeah, it was on their YouTube channel before. So, uh, sometimes Josh will prepare us, <laughs> which is so fun, man, because Josh called me. He's like, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> but I love that. I love when people are... are it's like a chef, you know, a chef who goes... Uh, they're like, I don't know, it it tasted good. I'm like, what did you put in there? Like turmeric? 
and a pinch of paprika. Like, I don't know, but it tastes good. And I could say, oh, you're referencing, uh, oh, this is like an Indian cuisine that uses both those spices. They're like, I don't know, Whole Foods. And like, I put it in and it's delicioso. So I like it. Uh, most guitar players are like that. Like, I don't know, I like it. And the reason why we love music theory is it gives us language so we can repeat the feelings we love. We can codify and store them. We can have like a whole database of feelings. And so this sharp nine feeling, the Jimi Hendrix chord, already is giving us a, an unconscious reference. Like, oh, we're in that zone. And then this little bad boy we'll talk about in a sec, that's actually pretty freaking hip. Like depending on how long you lay on that, that's super hip. Um, Cause what the ear would maybe expect is something like this, A7 altered, right? Like a five, we'll talk about why, like a five chord of the D7. And Josh's like, no, let's secondary dominant. What's already weird. We'll talk about it. Okay, but, but first things first, let's go into the melody notes that he's playing as he's, uh, as he's improvising over this progression he's created. Also, there's some chromaticism, you know, sliding into the D7 chord. Here we go, here's the, here's the solo. Let's see. F natural. Okay, do you, <laughs> hold on, time out. So first off, he's laying on this F which is really the sharp nine. It's the minor third of this weird dominant seven chord, okay? But there's a note that's outside of the scale you can already hear that he slides up to. So let's listen to that real quick. And we're gonna come back to harmony. Let's just like get overviews and then we'll come back to it. Also, we're doing like four of these in like an hour. So, holy go goodness. Okay, got it. It's pretty out there. So, okay, oh, this is fantastic, Josh. All right, so we have, the reason why this melody sounds weird and sort of, um, got my, 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 my memory's failing me, uh, Tom Morello-esque, is there's like a repeated pattern, which is this E flat to F, so we're like a whole step apart, this kind of a melody situation, going down to this kind of a melody situation, okay? To C to D. So this is, oops, this is a little too large. This is a whole step, okay, whole step. And then this is a whole step, this little melody thing he's doing, okay? Which means those notes are a, are a whole step apart. They are two semi, you know, two half steps apart. So a whole step apart. So we have this little melody situation. And what is this E flat as it relates to this D key we're in, right? It's the flat nine. So it's really altered and weird sounding, but because there's a pattern, which is this whole step, we're like, oh, it's, it feels, it makes sense to my brain. It would be like if I were in a conversation with you and I were to go like, uh, like um, uh, <laughs> we're talking about the Dodgers and I go cheeseburger, cheeseburger, cheeseburger. I need a cheeseburger. We're talking about Dodgers. You hear me say cheeseburger. Your first thought is what? Like we're talking about base, like, what are you talking about? I say it a second time. You're like, what, huh? By the third time, you're like, oh, he's hungry. Yeah, that it makes sense. Initially, what? Then, oh, got it. So if I were to just go like this, you'd be like, what? what, what, what? There's a D in the bass and you're playing an E flat. What, what, is something wrong with you? I'm like, no. Like, oh, it's a motif. It's a whole step motif. Got it. Touche. Um, and that's totally fair, Papal. We all have we all get to have our subjective opinions. Totally fair. Uh, I love it though. I love dissonance so much. If someone's like, oh, would you like eggs and bacon? I'm like, yeah, but you got Cholula, dude. You got some salt and pepper. Alright. What else is weird? Bring back that paprika. Where is that turmeric? Alright? Put it on my eggs. I like new flavors. That's just our five. Okay, we're just laying on the five. So we're mostly in minor pentatonic so far, except for that weird E flat. There it is again. Okay, A natural, great. Also, it's notable, this E flat is especially weird considering that at the end of this piece, this little thing, you have E seven. So you're like, okay, we're gonna flat nine this chord and then we're gonna play the major seven of this? No because that's the chord that's happening, you know, after, and you have this note in there. So on this chord, is weird, it's the flat nine. On this chord, 
It's the major seven. So it's like, this basically makes you feel like you're on an alien planet, this E flat. It's like, oh, cool, we're going on to the planet Zorbop. Ah, that's tight, dude. Thanks for telling me, dude. Actually, it's called Lunar Funk, so maybe? Huh? Cholula or Sriracha? I like them both, Chris. All right. Nice. Great. Okay, so, so these bits here are just, you know, pinch harmonics, which is not even a theoretical thing, but it's a technique. And then sliding down the strings. What is that called? A string scrape? I don't know, dude. I freaking play guitar. I should know this, dude. Tabasco? Whoa, Ryan. Let's slow down. All right. What? Come on, man. Cholula. All right, here we go. That's actually nice. I just realized there's finally an E natural. <laughs> the E natural finally comes into play, which is fun. I mean, you're taking a song that's so altered and suddenly you throw in the natural. So you have this E flat that we were talking about that's super out there and gives a lot of dissonance. Suddenly we have this E natural, so we're coming back to Earth? I don't know. I'm not saying Josh was composing this theoretically, but I am suggesting that unconsciously all of us are using these theory tricks. There are just a select few people like maybe Adam Neely or Jacob Collier or... Rick Beato or myself who are obsessed with theory because it's so it's so fun. It's so fun. What's better than than knowing it's cool to live in a universe like oh knowing how the universe works. Ah, oh, that's cooler, in my opinion. So uh, so I love this stuff. This is so fun. But but we're all doing this unconsciously. Some of us have taken classes and learned how to love our boyfriend, girlfriend, partner, spouses better. Some of us just intuit what they need or, or what we need in the relationship. Some musicians just intuitively choose weird things knowing that it'll produce a sensation. Others uh, come from a theoretical background and can pop in and out of those feelings if need be. It's especially helpful to have these tools if you want to be a hired gun or a composer or an arranger or, or a scorer. Because um, when, when the person comes in, the director goes, I need something that sounds really unsettled. I'll be like, oh. It's like, what are, what? But this melody sounds like we're in C sharp major, but I'm playing a D in the bass. Oh, make it weirder. Okay. Oh, sorry. Ah, oh, that's actually too, not weird enough. You get the point though. We start picking notes that we know are gonna cluster in odd ways. So these theoretical tricks allow us to create feelings, you know? Oh, make it sound pretty. Oh. Everything I'm playing is diatonic. Oh, a little melancholy. Oh, a little heartbreak. Great. So we have feelings we can draw upon. So all these little things we're talking about today, these will give us feelings to draw upon. We only got a few more minutes on this piece before we go to the next. Um, it's worth noting, JHS can pop into the comments and let me know. All this stuff is going to be available somewhere on JHS's sites, so probably in the description below if you want access to this sheet music. If you're like, let me jam along to this really quickly drawn lead sheet, well now you can. All right? I do something like this on my own Patreon. I have like a, on my Twitch streams, all of the Twitch stuff I do, I send up there, but this is a JHS stream, all right? You gotta go to jhs.org. Huh? Not sure. No, dot com. JHSpedals.com. <laughs> Most likely. Oh, okay. So one last thing we're going to talk about. We're already so altered, right? We got the D7 sharp nine. Real quick, what is that? What the heck are you talking about? That doesn't make, I don't know what that means. Well, let me explain what that means if you don't mind. In a key, any key, we're going to have a set of diatonic chords. All that means is these are prepared uh, almost like a prefix uh, meal. Oh, I'll have the prefix meal. I'd like the green beans. I'd like the steak. I'd like the red wine. I'd like the Brussels sprouts and the mashed potatoes. They all pair nicely together. They are made as a meal and everyone throughout the past couple hundred years has known these pair nicely together. It's going to make sense to the body, the mind, etc. What if I were like, hey man, I got this sweet meal. It's Sour Patch Kids, a donut hole. Uh, we got water, but, but, but it's a uh, spritzer. So it's, it's not water because it's flavored. Why do they do that? And we got, um, uh, <laughs> you know, like a, like a, you know, a crusted chicken. Okay. But dipped in half sugar and half boiling hot 
death sauce. It's just like, wait, what, dude? This meal don't make no sense. Well, if we want it to make sense, we go back to the prefix. The prefix harmonically is this. I'm doing it in C major. It works in any key because it's about relativity. So these same principles apply in every key. The two chords always minor. The three chords always minor. You know, if we're following the diatonic rules, the family of notes that the key signature produced. So when this happens, we get this fancy thing, which is the only reason I'm drawing this out. Okay, we get the, okay half diminished seven. We get this uh, this situation, which is the most important. Oh, major seven, minor seven, minor seven, major seven. Okay, so the only uh, chord that's dominant seven is here. So what that means is we have two. I'm sorry, three minor seven chords. We have two major seven chords, okay? And then out of no, and then, this is also unique, but it's a whole another story. This red thing, this, okay, is our very important chord. It's our dominant, okay? When you take a dominant chord, you spell it this way. You say, oh, I'm gonna have a one, a three, a five, and a seven, okay? These are all, uh, uh, there's no sharps and flats here, G, B, D, and F. So this is a major third. This is all gonna matter, I promise. Major third, okay, this, this interval is a perfect fifth. This interval is a dominant seven. So minor seven, but dominant sort of makes the chord. And that gives us G7, okay? What if we were to take this chord and add on top a, uh, a B flat? Ugh. Here we go. So, actually, I should technically call it a sharp nine because I'm going to be a good teacher today. Okay, A sharp. Same note as B flat. So we have G, we have, I'll well, stack them this way. We have G, we have B, D, F, and then A sharp, which is the same thing as B flat. Same note, same sound, different spelling. My name's Zane. I'm also Reeve's brother. I'm also, like, it's all me, different names for me. Um, also a goober, okay? And not a gubernatorial candidate. Stop spreading that rumor! I'm a goober, got it? Great. G, B, D, F, A sharp. So this note right here is the minor third of, of G, but when you add it with the B natural, you get this cool sound. Ooh. So that's our sharp nine chord. That's what Jimi Hendrix would play. So it's indeterminate. Is it major? Yay, major, or is it minor? Oh, it's both. So we can go, or can go, I can do major or minor, okay? So the sharp nine chord basically says to us, listen buddy, your left, your right, doesn't matter to me, both are right. It's a very like open chord of whatever you wanna do here. So long story short, this D7 sharp nine is that. It's sort of, is it minor, is it major? Mm, I don't know, you tell me. Is a glass half empty or half full? That's what this chord is all about. So normally when you have this sort of altered chord where it's so up and ended, you'll just sit on it. You will not do this sort of a chord, okay? So this is fun because all this really is is whole step movement and he's already going chromatic. It's like, might as well go, might as well go all around. So for a second, he's going up a whole step, okay? Our mind's going, We're just hearing that melody, but this cluster's moving with it, okay? So long story short, when you see a, a really altered chord, you normally just sit on it. So if you wanna make the song more altered, keep going, move it around. I do this a lot when I'm comping in a jazz setting. The song might be um, a, a, a D minor sort of two, five, one. And on the D minor chord, I might go like this. in this shape that was already kind of weird up in half steps whole steps so if i already created tension and i want more that's moving, that's moving around i move that already weird chord around unless you get really unlucky and move it so far away that it sounds right that's a whole other story uh we didn't do that in this one in this piece we created josh uh created uh tension okay we're all we're unsettled we're not really resolving until we finally do at the end And we resolve to a sharp nine chord. This is why people prefer, people in this chat, most of you I'm guessing are like me, we're guitarists, okay? We love pedals, we like tension. What if I were like, all right, here's the end of my song. 
you'd be like, oh, lame wuss, you've heard cra- classical wuss, dang, you know? I love classical music, so don't get me wrong. But you might be like, oh, that's so standard. Well, what's not standard? Oh, that's it. I added a sharp 11. That's not standard. What if I did this? Oh, excuse me, sir. It's like a polychord. A lot, few ways you could analyze that. Um, this is, uh, you know, what he did. So ending on that is, is why it's grungy. It's like when you leave the house and you have your suit on, your tie, and oh, you look so clean. Well, in rock and roll, we leave the house, we got a leather jacket on, maybe a little bit of guy liner, a little tussled hair. That's, that's the chord that represents that, in theory. Music theory of. By the way, what we're doing right now is a segment. It's it's called music theory of gaming. I do it on my on my streams on Twitch. So I do. Uh, we've done Undertale, Donkey Kong Country. I haven't done Mario yet. Why? It's so stupid. We've done like thirty games. Um, Persona Five. Done so many games. Um, we do this. We take three to five iconic songs from an OST, and we analyze what the composer was helping do. I also do collaborative streams with a guy named Destiny, and he'll kind of blindfold me and play me a song and say, what was probably happening in this game? And I'm like, oh, it sounds pensive, and like someone's about to get hurt? Yeah, that is what's happening. Oh, well, the music told me that. The music tells us these things. I'm feeling grungy. Oh, there it is. All right. I'm feeling like unsettled. Oh, okay. Flat nine, much? Okay, so there is a logic and reason behind uh, why music makes us feel what it does. We got 40 minutes left. Next song. Bebop Baloobop. She's my vacation on Arrakis. All right. Zane is the king of dad jokes. Thank you, Adrian. It is sad that how many dad jokes I make. Although there are some great dad jokes on these JHS show streams. So I hope I'm uh, in good company. Uh-huh. Thank you, Nick Pop. And yeah, OST is original soundtrack. Um, yeah, DGG. De- yeah. Well, okay. Well, all right, Andy. Tight. Um... Fallout theme, that's fun, Matthew. By the way, today we're going to be streaming on my Twitch after this at like 10.30 a.m. PST. We'll be doing some music theory of gaming. So if you want to keep the fun, uh, feel free to come on over. Evan, you're amazing. You're making it fun. Okay, Vacation on Arrakis. So we have our reference note, um, D, because that was the last song. Okay, so whatever note we hear here, we're going to compare that to that note and see how many half steps or whole steps away it is. Because if you're like me, you don't have per- I don't have perfect pitch. So I need a reference pitch of D... And we'll see what key this song's in. Okay, let's see. Here we go. D. Uh, so we are in the key of uh, my brain. A. Great. Okay, we're in A. Uh, great. Very minor pentatonic. Let's start at the top. Okay. The rhythm doesn't matter. Okay. Got it. Okay. We should write this riff out. Let's write it out. Nice. <laughs> you heard the B flat? Okay, we're going kind of harmonic, like Phrygian dominant. I love it. Okay, there's a reason why this might sound sort of fantastic. There's a reason why this might not sound super Western to you. It might sound more Eastern uh, or Persian or, or Middle Eastern even. Uh, that whole thing, right? This uh, That's going to be, uh, we'll talk about what that is. It's, it's usually Phrygian dominant, which is the fourth mode of the harmonic minor scale, fifth mode. I don't know. All right, so first let's get this melody. So the basis we're getting is something very clean, a minor pentatonic scale, okay? I know it's not tab, I know I'm drawing. I think they're gonna make tab. JHS is gonna convert this into tab, but unfortunately, I'm one of those rare guitarists that doesn't even really know how to read tab. Ugh. Ugh. Sorry, I started playing classical oboe and I'm a jazz, uh, I'm, really, I'm really a jazz snob, just kidding. I'm not that at all. All right. I like all music. So all we need is the notes. We're not going to make a perfect chart because it would take us, you know, six minutes to chart out. Oh, we could actually, though. It's like it's so easy. One, two, one, and two, and da, da. it's actually very easy. Let's just do it. Da, da, da. This is so simple. Okay, bop. We're done. Okay, so we're doing this. One and a. 
two, and three, and four, and one. Where's the snare drum? Where's the snare drum? Two and three and four and one. Okay. One, two, and three and four and one. I can't count. Great. Now I can count. Now I can count with the best of them. Beep. This is our little riff, okay? There we are. Read along at home. Great. So that's our little riff, okay, a little intro riff. All right, you dig? And then we go into this thing. Got it. My bad. So I'm hearing in my head, whole step below the root, which is G, A. Then I'm hearing minor third, four. So this ear training stuff, I highly recommend. If you transcribe, want to do jazz, want to do guitar solos, do it without the guitar in your hand. It'll take longer. And then your ear has multiple ways of hearing and perceiving a note. This has been a very helpful tool for me. I used to transcribe West Montgomery songs uh, on my high school bus. More on West, West Montgomery later. But anyway, it's very helpful. So one e and a two e and a ba da t -t -t. And then we got a little eighth note rest. Ba da t -t -t, right? Ba da ba net ba da ba. And then sixteenth note rest. And then ba da ba. Little funk rhythm. Da 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 da. And then a quarter note rest, one E and a great. Okay. Then again. This is very slot because we're doing it fast because we only got an hour. Sixteenth note tied. Da tied. Da 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 da. Right? Let's hear it. Ah. Da 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 da. Dum, da, da, da. I cheated in, in music theory class. I would whistle like real quietly, real quiet. And then uh, the teacher would be like, oh, you got a perfect score. And I'd be like, I was singing the notes and hearing five, four, three, four, three, one. And I was singing on my fretboard and I was whistling. I was cheating. Dang, Linda, right? Okay. <clears throat> I see. Yep, eighth notes and sixteenth. That mathematically works. Great. A little sloppy chart, but we're fine. This is our riff. Great. And then the second time. Oh, this is wrong. I messed up. Huh. Oh, what? There's an extra eight sixteenth though. What did I do wrong? God dang it. Um This should be this, y'all. I, I blew it. Da dang. Okay. Um uh, my brain's not working today, so there's that. But th mathematically you get something like this. Right. Oh, eighth note, sixteenth note. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, cool. Right? Yeah. Nailed it. Um, okay, cool. So, and the second time, it's like, whatever. There's a grace note of this thing. Like, who even doesn't really matter. Whatever. That's like in, in the second time. Okay. Ba. What note is that? Chat. What note is that? So, we're in A. Okay, we're in A. That's A. What note is ba? People with perfect pitch do not answer. That's cheating. Ba. What is that as it relates to A? It's like saying, okay, this is a phone. This is, you know, how many inches away is this? You're like, oh, it's like 10. Okay, great. How far away is uh, this thing from the thing? Oh, that's, t you're using relativity. Like, oh yeah, I, I generally know how, what that distance looks like, feels like. Um, did someone guess the note? Ba. Yeah, people, check with the instrument later. Thank you, Thorn. F natural. What? That's not right. When you hear this scale, what do you think? You think... You think minor pentatonic? You think minor pentatonic? When we think minor pentatonic, we normally are hearing it. We think blues scale minor pentatonic. Normally, 
When we hear this, we're not thinking minor scale. We're not normally thinking that. So I like that he just goes, um, we're actually in a minor key. You thought we were in, but you've always heard minor pentatonic, kind of bluesy. Nope, F natural, baby. So we love that, that stands out to us. <laughs> that also stands out. So we have an F natural, and we have a C sharp. He goes, but uh, it's D C sharp. Isn't anyone can tell me at all on the grave? You. I'm just kidding, but that melody is in there. So, and again, I, I know I'm kind of manic right now because it's 9 a.m. and I, when I wake up, I go, I go, go, go. Um, but uh, that feeling over A and that rhythm, it makes me think of that song. And that's important, because if I theoretically know what it is, not just kind of guessing, uh, oh, where is it? I know I knew that was DC sharp, and we can all know that. That helps me when I'm in a gig or a performance setting, and I go, I want this feeling. So I'm doing a song, not this jam, some other song. And I'm like, dude, I want that Kiss by a Rose kind of vibe. That's what I want. I love that song, it's so ethereal. So I'll start my solo with this. I'm like... And suddenly it's like, whoa, huh, this guy's not just playing minor pentatonic all day, every day up and down. He's like thinking about what he's saying. And I might go, and then what Josh does is, okay, so we'll talk about what that is. My hunch, I don't, I don't think we've heard enough information to know that it's Phrygian dominant. That's my hunch is, is the mode that we're in. Um, and it's helpful to know this because you can be in a blues setting and you can be like, oh, I heard that Zane talked about Phrygian dominant because Josh played it. If, if I know how to play that on my guitar, next blues solo I do, I can be the coolest dude in the blues place, coolest gal in the blues place. You're like, oh, come on. You go to a blues gig and play that scale, which is what Josh is playing. Forget about it. Forget it. You're the coolest. You're the coolest, Jim. This is the reason why I got ostracized from blues clubs when I was like 12. They're like, you certainly are choosing some interesting notes. Ugh. All right, that's why the jazz let people like me more. God dang. All right, here we go. Um, that's not true. My blues legend people who taught me were like, you know what, keep it up, dude. Keep doing your weird freaking thing. And Josh, keep it up. Okay, so, so what notes I've heard enough, okay? We've seen enough here. We're almost done with this. We're going to the next song. What is the Phrygian dominant mode? Please stick with me. I promise this is mathematically gonna make sense. Just hold on for dear life. We are going to write down a D harmonic minor scale. Please stick with me. That's a whole step, E natural. Okay, D to E is a whole step. Uh, F natural, that's a half step. Uh, so this is a half step between these two notes. Whole step here, G natural. Whole step here, A natural. Half step here, B flat natural. Wait a second. Oh yeah, there it is. Here's my C sharp. Uh, minor third interval, what? C sharp, and then the root, okay? This is our D harmonic minor scale, okay? D harmonic minor, all right? So we have, uh, these are the notes. What if I started on A? OMG, this would make it A Phrygian dominant mode. What the heck does that mean? That means if you play a D harmonic minor scale, which is what Josh is doing, but the lowest note being heard is A, you hear, I go up a fourth from here, ba ba D, and I sing a D harmonic minor scale. D, E, F, G, A, B flat, C sharp, D. Da, 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 uh, sorry. Da, 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 Guess what? The Witcher 3 loves this mode. Destiny the movie loves this mode. I mean the game. Uh, Halo, I'm pretty sure uses this mode. You play a video game and you're like, oh my god, ancient druids must have lived here. They are using the D harmonic minor scale. I'm laughing so I'm not singing on pitch. Phrygian dominant. Okay, that's what they're doing. That's how you create this, ooh, what are we doing? It's kind of harmonic minory, but darker. It is harmonic minory. But the root is the five, making it a Phrygian dominant mode, which is weird. That's so weird. So anyway, that's what's happening here. Next song. Watch, I'll jam along with him in Phrygian dominant. Watch. OK, 
Okay, so, uh, oh, that's totally fair, the Paleo Trucker. You need to rest up, okay? I respect that. Yes, this is an energetic stream. We, we're getting through four songs in only an hour. Normally on my Music Theory of Gaming streams on Twitch, I'll spend like 45 minutes per song or more. And um, we'll dive in and really, we'll, we'll go at a much slower pace. So take care of yourself, love it. And Music Man, love you, okay? Um, I have no idea about theories. Is Zayn a wizard or is this level of confidence normal? I, don't quit. Um, I am more obsessed with music theory than most. Um, I mentioned earlier some people who are who are thankfully making theory widely known, but I won't name any names. I have a lot of friends who are absolute straight up psychotic genius musicians, and they do not enjoy this process as much as I do. I've spent a lot of time with this with this, so uh, I, I'm pro I, I would say I'm an outlier. I give master classes at universities on music theory, generally on the comparison between classical and jazz and pop theory forms. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely. Do not be feel weird if you're like, what is happening? Um, yeah, but not. I'm not at all tuning my own horn, but I'm. I am obsessed with understanding how things work. It's very, very fun for me. Okay, that was a fun song. So what, what did we learn from that? We learned a minor pentatonic scale gives you a basis, but you don't gotta stay there. Maybe get Phrygian dominant with it. Add some flat nines, aka the B flat. Add some major thirds, aka the C sharp. In fact, this is the inverse of what this song is doing. This is saying D7, major, dominant, oh, major thirds, baby. Give me that, give me that B natural. Oh, but for fun, I'll add a melody note that's the flat three, because I'm weird and I'm sharp nining. This is the opposite. Oh, this is totally minor, minor pentatonic, so minor. Oh, yeah, Josh is like, um, C sharp? Excuse me? Capiche? I'm going to use C sharp and make it major. So, Bill Frizzell does a fun thing with that, too. It's... We won't get into that today, most likely. Okay, let's go to the next piece called Stack of Cash. We have A as our reference point. Now, this is a trick I did when I was on the school bus uh, two years ago, okay, 19 years old. Hey, Hollywood, you ready? Can play 19 to 22 shit, uh, easy, all right? So, I'm gonna need you to give me a ring. Cause I'm just, I'm, I live in Hollywood, so I'm like, I'm like, I'm, uh, okay. You don't need to know my real age, capiche? All right, I'm young. God dang it, my agents are gonna fire me. But they didn't never hire me because that's not how agents work. All right, so, uh, oh God. Um, in high school, right, back in the day, uh, I would, once I finished a song, I was in A, 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 and I do not have a perfect pitch, so I had to remember that A for the next song. That's an A natural, so what key is this in? A. Ba. We had a C sharp, great, fantastic. A7, great. Great. Are you guys a fan of the Dorian mode? All right, you bet about to be. That's the Dorian mode. What are these modes? Modes are, there are so many things. There's ways to create them. There's a whole science behind it. But really what a mode is at its core is um, it's, it's that. It's that word mode, but don't think of music theory. Think of the word that you use in life mode. If my mode of speaking to you was like, uh, yeah, yeah, he's, um, yeah, he's not, yeah, he's nice. He's, uh, yeah, he's nice. My mode of speaking is very reticent and passive aggressive seemingly. And sort of like, what are you hiding? No, no, no. He's yeah. Ba ba ba. That, that cadence, that way I'm speaking. It's like, Hmm, his mode of speaking, his manner of speaking or his mode is sort of like, I'm suspicious. What if I said, oh yeah, no, no, he's a, he's a really nice guy. No, no, he's, yeah, he's very, trust me, he's a very nice guy. Now I'm being reassuring. Totally different mode. Same sentence, basically. This guy's a nice guy. First time, I obviously don't think he is. Second time, no, I'm, I'm trying to reassure you. He's a very nice guy. Um, how about this one, you know? Yeah, he's a nice guy, yeah. Yeah, he's a nice guy, yeah. Now I'm jealous. Same words, different mode. So when we talk about modes, we're talking about, oh, we're doing scales. We're doing, um, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, or one, two, three, four, five, flat, six, raise, seven, one, or one, two, three, four, five, six, dominant, seven, one, or one, two, three, raise, four, five, six, seven, one. I just went through four modes, Lydian, Mixolydian, harmonic minor is not a mode, but I, you get the point. So this mode is Dorian. But we're playing an A7 chord. Yet again, Josh, I'm, I'm seeing a pattern here, Josh. You like to take a foundation and say, I want something different. 
And guess what? Your guitar pedals are also like that. Oh, I'm going to analyze your psychology. Dang, Linda. You're not listening to me, Linda. Dang. Uh, oh, we're in minor key. Penita- no, we're not. We're in different dominant. Oh, you guys love this song. It's called A, D- A Dominant 7. It's so standard. Get ready for a Mixolydian mode. Hi, my name's Josh Scott. I love Mixolydian mode. I can't end you. Ah, give me Dorian. Ah. Okay, you see what I'm saying? I, I love, oh, I love Mixolydian. It is, yay, can't you, what, just psych? Oh, I messed up. I was going to do a cool trick there. But God, oh, Dorian more like. Okay. So do you see what I'm saying? This is kind of, there is psychology and philosophy behind this stuff. Just like mathematicians back in the day, you know, philosophers and mathematicians were very linked and now they are again. Heard of quantum theory, heard of string theory. Many things are happening when you're mathematical. Many things are happening when you're musical. Um, And I, time and time again, when I have friends or my girlfriend, I'll talk to people. I'm like, oh, you're going to like this song. And they say, I like it because it's dark. I'm like, yeah. It also, every song you love has a flat five. It's just like out of nowhere. Oh, I do? Yeah. No, I like dark stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Yes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I was saying, that's what I was saying. There's just a way that we can create it. And the more tools we have musically, we baby step towards these theory tools. The more we have, the more we can uh, create from uh, not just intuition, but from thought or from communication. It's sort of like when we learn these things, it's sort of like if you're... um, in a, you know, walking into a room and you turn the lights off, you close your eyes and you're like, okay, I don't need the lights. I don't need, I know the chairs here and here's my, well, what if someone came in your room and they like messed your chair up and moved it? You might fall or they like threw out your iPad. Like, where's my iPad? Because you're willfully walking into the room. I don't need to see the room. Turn the lights off, keep it black in here. I'll just close my eyes and I'll feel around. That's what most of us do as guitar players. I know where the, this is where my phone is and this is my guitar, yep, and this is my rubber band ball. Why do I have that? Don't ask. Um, yeah, I know I know where this stuff is. But what if I'm offering here is like, what if we open our eyes? I turn the lights on. Then when a bass player goes to a new mode, we're like, I know what you're doing, Mr. Cheeky. I'm going to still bring my mode to you. You changed your bass note. Now I'm going to change the scale I'm playing so it's still the same mode. Don't you dare. Or vice versa. Oh, you're changing the bass notes? Yeah, take care of the modes for me. I'll keep playing the C major scale. You play a D minor, now we're in D Dorian. You play an F scale, uh, F bass note, now we're in F Lydian. So being aware and opening our minds, we baby step towards it, but uh, come on, it's fun. Isn't this fun? It's a lot of information, but it's it's so fun. Oh God, if you want to like do a slow version of this, please feel free to come hang out on streams, on Twitch and stuff. I also teach private lessons and I love doing them and they're not as fever pitched. Oh God, we got 15 minutes left. Let's go. Minor pentatonic. Minor. Just uh, my one, three, one, three. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Five, seven. Oh, there's that six. Remember when I said Dorian? Oh, F natural? Well, for a moment, it was natural minor. We're Phrygian dominant again. Excuse me? Aeolian, which is minor scale. Minor pentatonic. So when you hear a new a new sound, like a unique thing, it's just a different one of these modes. Great. So that was so the Dorian thing. Right, quick is just I'm gonna draw here. A B C D E F sharp. G A. Okay. Got it. Okay. That F sharp is the unique note. Major six. What? What? Okay. That's what makes it Dorian. But Josh went from that to F natural, which is a minor scale. We don't have too much time to go into depth on these last two, but point is we're hearing a lot of modes. I've also heard Phrygian dominant right here. No. What is that? Oh, that's dope. It's not for a gene dominant. Sorry, I heard a half step and I got overexcitable. That is, I'm just going to call this chromaticism. 
okay? Because we're taking like the we're taking the major the major seven and the minor seven and the minor third. So long story short, there are twelve notes in Western music. Okay, twelve of them. We had I just played twelve and then the octave, which is thirteen. So so twelve individual notes. The way we combine them is what makes the the the, the stew we're making. Oh, this stew has carrots and beef and celery and it's just you know it's a beef stew standard but if i throw in like eggs and like weird cheese and but not onion not french onion soup and then like a like a beet and it's like whoa what's in this soup this is weird some weird flavors this soup has this this soup has this no get back to the stew with the oh okay regular stew so the way we combine these notes is what makes us feel different Oftentimes, when I'm improvising and soloing with a band, I will just literally pick random notes. So, like. I'm not playing well because it's like a pencil in my hand, but you get the idea. Okay, so moral of this story, dominant seven, you know, allows us usually mixolydian uh, or or maybe minor blues scale. Josh used at least four different modes and scales, which is why it sounds unique. The F natural, F sharps were heard, uh, a G sharp was heard, a little harmonic minor, kind of, okay? So just mess around, have fun with modes. When you get a dominant seven chord, realize that it could be altered. And that's something for another day or, or, or a different lesson. Okay, lastly, we have Dad is a Slacker. And this is really important, okay? This song's in bass clef. That's a joke. All right, because bass, bass, bass is a joke. Are we clear on that? <laughs> All right. Okay, we clear on that? Bass is a joke. I'm sorry, what was that? I don't know. Oh, it's bass solo? Oh, let me just fast forward. All right, how does it? How do I fast forward that quick enough? It's a joke, okay? <laughs> right? I'm just kidding. I'm just trying to make people laugh. Listen, I drew I drew bass clef because I thought you guys would laugh at that because it's so random. Why? We don't. It doesn't matter what you write this in. We can read bass clef if we want. Dad is a slacker. Let's do it. Hey. Ooh. So first off, a lot of Jimi Hendrix-isms, right? These sort of things, the hammering on from the two to the three. Okay, but the third and the two are down, they're low. These are first inversion triads. And there's a minor seven chord. Great. Got it. Great, cool, G at nine. Woo! Okay, D over F sharp, but D, D add nine over E, F sharp, okay. Okay, D minor over F, got it. Okay, okay, E minor, very nice. Add nine. G add nine, D add nine, over F sharp, got it. Minor. Got it. Great. And it ends on G. Oh man, you're a wacky dude. It all started in A and then we ended in G. How how dare you, Josh? God, gosh darned it. Ah, oh, God, I thought we were in freaking A minor. God dang. So this A minor thing, it was just a preparation. Okay. So it's sort of like if you're in a conversation and you're and you're saying, okay, I got a crazy story to tell you. I went to the hospital yesterday, but no, no, time out. So I'm walking, I'm, I'm walking here, and the taxi's, no, no, that's not the story. The taxi's there, and, I'm, and I got a, a hot dog. Oh, the, oh, delicious hot dog, I poured some mustard, some relish, and you're like, dude, 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 what, you went to the hospital? Did this? No, 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 I'm just giving prep. Got the hot dog, got the relish, I, so I called Timmy. Now on the phone, we're talking about the, we're talking about the Yankees and the Dodgers, the series, it's just so, it's like, dude, dude, get, this is a, and you're prefacing. You're like, oh, we're just talking about hot dogs. And then you're like, and then I got hit by a car, went to the hospital. What? I wasn't expecting that turn, except uh, you gave it away, which he didn't do in this song. Point is, we can 
we can take someone on a journey by being like, yeah, we're totally in A minor. Psych, I was just trying to get you down here. So there's different ways of storytelling, and this is harmonic storytelling. This is preparing the ear and then shifting it. Again, what is Josh's thing in these four jams? Preparing you, psych. Preparing you, psych. Preparing you, psych. Dang, dang, dude. Preparing you, A minor. Oh my God, like A minor-ish. Psych. You get the idea. I'm on to you, Josh. Right? What I'm going to do is, you know, people analyze handwriting. I'm going to analyze people's songs and then like call a psychologist and be like, figuring them out. Got them. Okay. What I'm going to analyze this is, because we don't have much time and we got to do a record time. We're, we're gonna, I have a record right here that I can't wait to show you. We're going to just call this A minor 7. And we're going to be very sloppy here. We're going to call this C over E to D over F sharp. Okay, the rhythm's not right. And then B flat over D. Okay, just, just whatever. Just hear me out. To C over E. Again, what is up with Josh and these flat twos? I love you. God bless you. What are you, jazzer? What is he? What are you, jazz musician? Dang. All right, so that's essentially, yeah, that's all the rhythm is. It's three bar phrase. But that little, that little intro, that little pickup bar, let's move it, okay? So it's like, it's like this. Oh, sorry, sorry, one second. Okay, just like C5, C5, D5, A minor 7. Okay, whatever. This is kind of our little loop, all right? So all of this is not only feeling like A minor, that's kind of our, our center, it's also this weird B flat thing, which is just a fun whole step movement. Have we done that yet today? Uh, D7 sharp 9, E7 sharp 9, yes. Okay, so uh, let me go to this G at, at 9 thing. Okay. So this, now we just changed keys, sort of. It's sort of like that was our two chord, okay? It was like two, one, the whole time. This was a trick. Okay, cool. So uh, now that we're in G, we are firmly in G. How do we know that? Well, we have to use it analysis when we're looking at chord changes so we can improvise over them. Why is my in-ear monitor messing up? Um, so, so you have to look at, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. You know, you're like, oh, that piece is blue and that piece is red. And oh, that's like a seagull's eye or... <laughs> Like, you know, the standard blue and red seagull eye. Um, but so you go, all right, well, I see a, a one. That could be the one chord. That would be a very nice five. This little minor situation, and then the six chord is E minor. Yeah, we're going to pretty much be in G. But if I were to improvise over this, because we're really running out of time, I would use G Ionian as far as modes. It's our major scale. Here, I would use, um, let's see. Yeah, of course. D Mixolydian. Okay, which is the same same scale as G major. You just let the chord take care of it for you. So play a G major scale here. Play a G major scale here. These are both G major scale. G major. Parentheses. G major e e equals D mixolydian when a D chord's being played underneath it. Okay. Here. I think I'd use Dorian here. I don't know, man. They're both great. D minor, D Dorian doesn't make a difference to me because it's already stepping so out of out of uh, bounds. All right, Dorian makes a little more sense because that keeps the common tone of the B natural, which is in the G chord, and the D over F sharp. Okay, E minor. I guess I just use E minor. No, I used E Dorian. Sounds so much cooler. So these are the scales I'd use, and we'll solo over this. So let's jam along with Josh Scott's jam. Let's have a little inception moment here. What do you say? Oops. Let's have a little inception moment. 
Bebop Baloobop, she's my baby. Time to jam over the jam? What? Let's use these charts to jam over it. I was overplaying like crazy. So anyway, that uh, that's how that works. Let's jam over the rest of them. We'll do record time, and then we'll get out of here, and we'll uh, we'll send you on your merry way. And for those of you that want to continue the fun, I'll be streaming directly on my Twitch TV. It's, it's twitch.tv slash Zane Carney. We'd love to have you. Mm. Okay, before though, before, uh -huh, I didn't forget, before we jam through these right now, using what we've learned, um, all these jams are now on their own YouTube channel. So you go to Fresh Clips, okay, uh, youtube.com slash Fresh Clips. There were no subscribers when they made this because it was the second they made it. I'm sure there are already a lot. Uh, all it is is the fun jams that you're hearing right now. So just go to youtube.com slash uh, Fresh Clips, I believe, or it'll say in the description below. But it's just going to be a bunch of these jams that we're analyzing today, and you can just enjoy them. So no podcast, just fun music. And if you're feeling even fancier, you're like, I'm fancy, Zan. I eat the red wine meal you referred to earlier. Well, BandLab. BandLab has all these jams. So you can use these sheets by downloading them from JHS. Again, in the description. You can download this these like like lead sheets I made really quickly. And you can improvise over these jams like I'm about to do right now. Okay? So you just go to BandLab and listen to the songs. So let's jam through all four songs using these charts we had. Let's have some fun here. Here we go. Lunar Funk. Time to jam along with Josh Scott's jam. It's an inception moment. Here we go. Nothing like an acoustic guitar over great sounding guitar pedal jam. That's what everyone wanted. No one asked for this. Here we go. Next jam. And you can be doing this. Go to Band Lab and do it yourself. Have some fun. Jam along with these things. This one's called Vacation on a Rockus. You're not wrong, Jay. It's because we don't have much time to plug in and do everything. <laughs> I'm about to get into a groove there. All right, uh, next jam. What do we learn here? Stack of cash, mixolydian, slash any mode you'd like. Just 
which went through about four modes, right? playing a lot over these to explore the harmonies we talked about. We're not exactly trying to be musical right now, just FYI. I'm trying a little bit. And the point is, I'm trying to like really highlight the harmonic things that were happening in what we learned versus let's make music. Because if we're trying to make music over this, I'd be thinking about the guitar I'm playing and supporting him. I might go like... If this were like a recording session or an actual piece, I'd let him take the lead like he is. Right? Now it's kind of jam band territory. We take what we've learned here, and we don't over soul over the purse, you know? This is like the Grateful Dead kind of approach. Knowing what's happening enough to listen to them and jam along and support. on the eighth note. Anyway, point is, this can be used for good, it can be used for evil. And I saw a comment earlier that sometimes when you know theory, you're not in, in your heart and soul. I don't agree. I don't agree with that. Oh no. But that's just me. Here's why I don't agree with that. Um, I could talk to you all like, bang, bang, ah, give me water. I, and it's like shouting at you like a caveman. But language helps me say, you know, I know you want to go to the park. I'm really thirsty. And I, I, I want to let you have fun at the park. I just need to get some water right now, honey. I'm just thirsty. Is that okay? Look at all that language I just used. Look at how much more emotionally sensitive that was, how much more connected, more detailed. That's all theory does. Anyone who thinks that learning theory will separate you from your heart um, has gotten has peeked around the corner and said, oh, there's a lot of information in there. It will never look good. That garage is too messy. I'm like, no, 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 if we look at it, it's overwhelming. But if we day by day pull pieces out, now the garage is organized and is functional. And then it's automatic. You go and you do your weights in there, you park your car in there, it's, it's functional room. So that theory thing, in my opinion, is just a, a, a thing we peek behind, we're too scared by sometimes. But if we look behind and say, I can do that over the next three years, it's fun too. I get to look at old trinkets I used to have, like this level, what a trinket. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's my position on theory. Um, it has never gotten in the way of me feeling heartfelt if I'm making music. If I'm singing... I mean, this is not a song I've written. I'm just messing around. I'm writing a song In front of you Without you Whatever. And I hope that it It's a terrible melody and I mess up what I sang. You get the point. I can be emotional Cause this language has become Part of my world You know, like, it's, a, it's about how much time have we put in to really get in this stuff and then the heart, psh, you know, anyway. Okay, last song to jam on and then we're gonna do record time and get out of here and I'll see you on my Twitch channel. Okay. We'll go more musical this time. So 
I'm choosing different voicings using the chords that are there on the chart. Okay, that might be one way of playing this. Another that's, that's very acoustic is maybe we'll jam over it. But if we know the theory, the architecture, we can do anything we want. Right, there's a different part. Ah, whoops. I'm over playing like crazy today. I'm just trying to get all these notes in. It's just, the other stuff was more musical, as you can tell. So that essentially wraps it up as far as the music theory section of today's very special JHS show. We're over time a little bit, so we're gonna, we're gonna dive right in to record time. Who's ready? Us. Oh, I didn't see you there. Hey, hey, uh, guys, my record for the day, you can only buy it on vinyl. It's not on the internet uh, as far as Spotify, I don't think. But that's what uh, Josh does. He shows great vinyl records, and I'm like, well, let's show this one. You can kind of get this record online, I'll explain. This is my favorite guitar player. This is the reason why I started playing guitar uh, and taking it seriously. This is Wes Montgomery's small group recordings, okay? So this is a compilation that was made, I think by, yeah, Verve, there it is. Um, Wes Montgomery, uh, he did some stuff that led into smooth jazz, which is not my thing, um, but his, his hardcore jazz playing is untouchable. It's, uh, he's the best jazz guitar player of all time, in my opinion. Um, no blues is on here, okay? That's up-tempo, or not, medium-tempo blues. Uh, we got uh, Impressions on here, super up-tempo, modal, Dorian song. We got Misty. All of these songs are from Smoking at the Half Note. And in fact, so are these. Unit 7, 4 on 6. So all of these songs you can hear on Spotify elsewhere um, uh, from, from the Smoking at the Half Note record. This, it also has some Jimmy Smith stuff. So James and Wes and Mellow Mood. I think one's from Dynamic Duo, the other's from the Further Adventures of Jimmy uh, Smith and, and Wes Montgomery. So anyway, this is the album I wanted to show for my For the Record thing. It's like, it's a, it's the disc's inside there. And uh, actually it's a double disc, right? I forgot about that. Uh, I enjoy this from time to time. I also listen on non-vinyl because I'm terrible. I'm a terrible musician. Uh, this is the record that I would like you guys to know about. So check out Wes Montgomery's Small Group Recordings. If you can't find that, Dynamic Duo, Further Adventures of Jimmy and Wes, Smoking at the Half Note. It's basically a compilation, but it's nice to have some of my favorite albums all on a, on a dual disc situation. Anyway, that's pretty much it for today. We did uh, uh, music theory of Josh Scott's jams. We had fun doing it. We learned about how you can listen to all these jams over on the Fresh Clips channel. We learned about how you can go to BandLab and listen to all these jams and jam along with them. And this sheet music will be available somewhere in the description below. Uh, it, this has been an absolute treat and honor. JHS, all y'all, I, I really hope we do this again. This was so fun. I love your jams, and I had a uh, I had a blast. Uh, and again, if you're if you're watching this right now, come on over right now to twitch.tv slash Zane Carney, where we'll be continuing hanging out, getting to know each other. I also have a Discord. We'd love to have you there. And uh, most importantly, this jazz record that just came out, Alter Ego. Uh, feel free to listen to it. It's on some Spotify editorial playlists right now, um, and I'm really grateful that 
the jazz world is embracing uh, this album. Um, so there's that. Thanks, to, a huge thank you to you, JHS, for taking them to the channel. Big thanks to everyone tuning in. We really appreciate it. Head over to zancorn.com or check the description for your amazing JHS. Yeah, Patreon, Instagram, whatever. It's all in the link for me. Uh, but please keep subscribed to this channel, the JHS channel. You got to listen to it. And the last thing I'll say, and then I'm done promoting and, and pl being pluggy, um, I have an alter ego concert film, an entire concert film that is on YouTube. It's a 90 minute live performance filmed at Catalina Jazz Bar. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of new to YouTube, so we'd love to have you watch that that movie. It would help us get monetized and, and be taken off on YouTube ourselves more. That's over on youtube.com slash St. Carney. Anyway, uh, you guys are amazing. This was so fun. Simon Park, you're amazing. Hobo Roadie, Evan Jammin, you're amazing. Music Man, you're amazing. Chicken, everyone in the chat, Boris, Shippy, everyone, thank you so much. I certainly hope you enjoyed today. I know I did. And I will see you all uh, over on Twitch right now and, and at a show in the future and hopefully back here on JHS someday soon. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.